this evening. But first of all, I just wanted to say welcome. Hello, um, I'm Rhonda Rose. I'm principal of Rudolph Gordon School. One unique thing that I already have in common with you, I have a fifth grader here at Rudolph Gordon. So I'm also sitting in your chair um, as well as being your principal. But just an exciting time. One of the great things about Rudolph Gordon is we're a K-8 school. But as you know, in your own home, whether this is your oldest child or one of, um, this is my fourth child, so we've kind of been through this, but dynamics change, choices change, and we need to learn to support them. But part of this process, as we transition to middle school, is about career exploration. We have so many amazing opportunities. First of all, I'm so excited for the vertical alignment with Fountain Inn. As a faculty, we have visited back, um, Fountain Inn High School just to kind of see what our end in mind, how we're preparing them for the next level, and even beyond. Um, you know, and we're learning more and more, not asking our kids, what do you want to be when you grow up, but what makes you happy? Where are your passions? Where, what's your interests? And being able to match those streets. And it starts here with these choices, as simple as it sounds, planting those seeds, but middle school is such a wonderful time of that exploration, getting to know, and it sometimes it clicks, and sometimes you find out what you don't like, and that's very important too. So hopefully, if you've had time, um, maybe you haven't yet, but your children got a little preview today about some of those choices. We have some setup out, outside that some of you saw when you came in, and we hope to continue to build that. But this is the first step in a lot of these choices that students had that we didn't have these amazing opportunities. Um, you know, they, they say now it's very typical for students to change jobs five to seven times in a career. Um, there's jobs out there that our kids are going to be doing that aren't even created yet, which is kind of mind-blowing to think. So, you know, just to think that, it, you know, it starts with a simple mind like this, um, but to be able to tap into their interests and what they like is so important. And also, being in a K-8 school, we don't want to take for granted that, you know, just some of you have been here since kindergarten, but things do start to shift, things do start to change, and we want to be able to provide that experience and support for you as well. Another thing that you know, if you've been at Rudolph Gordon, is our size is very unique. Um, so we are a rather large school, so that's kind of why the structure you have, we kind of put it up here this evening. And on behalf of all of our faculty staff, I'd like to say welcome, but there are some folks leading this because when we divide it into this structure, we get to know your children a lot better. You have kind of some first points of contact, obviously your classroom teachers, but our administration and our counseling staff is also here to support your child and you as a family. So um, we do have some folks here. Um, I'll let Ms. Atkins speak because a lot of you um, speak with her on a daily basis. Ms. Hawkins is your middle, fifth, and sixth grade school counselor. And Ms. Cooley is our seventh and eighth grade counselor. And Ms. McCain was somewhere at the door welcoming people when um, you came in as well. So we're all a team, but any one of our administrators is here for your child. We just kind of divide it up this way because it helps us develop deeper relationships and then you know who to go to um, to be able to help you and support your child along the way. Ms. Acton, thanks for being here. Hi, everyone. It's so good to see you and to see your faces. I've talked to a lot of you on the phone, so it's kind of nice to put a face with a name and a voice. And same thing, I'm sure, here. Um, I just want to let you know how wonderful your children are. Um, they are, each and every one of them is unique and have so many um, opportunities and potential, and I've gotten to know them, and I am certainly blessed. The other blessing we have is that um, Ms. Hawkins and I will be with them in this next step over to sixth grade. And that is um, great for us. And it's also great for your children because we take them over there, you know, then the fifth grade and we show them how this, it's all the same, but they still come in nervous and you're still nervous. But it's okay because you've got us that are with that consistent um, partnership with your kids. And um, we love them, and we take care of them, and we wipe their tears, and we listen to them when they're having issues, and when they're having great days, and when they're having bad days, but we are there with them consistently. And then the same thing happens when they move up, I call it upstairs, upstairs to the big kids, you know, and when they go to 7th and 8th, they have that same opportunity with um, Ms. McCain and Ms. Pulley. So we're very blessed to be able to do that with your children. I won't take up much of your time because um, this is based on the curriculum night and the choices that you guys are going to get to make and the exciting things that you're going to get to do 
Um, and we're just really excited to support you and all that. So if you don't get, when after this is all done, the Related Arts will be out in the hallway so that you guys can kind of tour and go see what it's all about in their classes and then ask them any kind of individual questions that you want to and kind of make those decisions on what you want to do next year as a sixth grade middle schooler. Thank you, Ms. Acton. Hey, I'm Joy Hawkins, um, fifth and sixth grade school counselor. This is my first year as well, 28th year in the district. So I'm new, but not that new. So I'm going to go over the first part with you. And the first part is going to be the core part of registration and kind of how that goes. Then we're going to hand it over to our, our electives and you're going to hear them speak and then we'll come back and how to do electives at the end, okay? So the first part, we do have a timeline that the district gives us. In sixth grade, February the 22nd and 23rd, I will be going in with Ms. Pooley and we're going to be registering electives with your students, okay? Because they do it on the computer. But we'll, it'll all make sense at the end. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but that's kind of shot over. The core classes, sixth grade is at the top. We all take English class. So you either take English studies, six, or GT six. And GT is gifted and talented, and your student has already qualified for that. So if they're in gifted, talented right now, then they will move up to English six and gifted and talented. There are a few scores and a couple of testing and screeners that might take place if you're on the borderline this summer. So if your student's on that borderline, we will um, have the challenge um, teacher to screen that and then let us know before the year is out whether your child qualifies for gifted and talent in English. As far as math goes, we have math six and we have math six and seven. And there's a placement requirement for math six and seven, okay, the teachers that follow. Your teachers, Homeroom teachers, your fifth grade teachers are placing the students in these classes, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so math and English, they're putting them in the system, and you will see all this. So then English, we just got kind of said all this, but English, if it's GT, we're placing them there. If not, any questions will go from there. Um, science and social studies, everyone will take science and social studies. It's just science and social studies six, and that gets mass produced in. So we don't have to worry about that. So that'll be registered for your child. PE will be mass registered for your child. So everybody will take a semester of PE, okay? So those are the core classes, your English, your math, your science, your social studies, and then of course PE. So now we're gonna let Related Arts kind of give you a, a run through of what they do so you'll be able to pick those classes and then we'll talk about how we pick those, okay? So we have Ms. Saunders, good chorus, that'll start us out. Good evening. As she said, I am Ms. Saunders and I teach both chorus and orchestra. And so we're starting with chorus. And um, so if you love music and you love to sing, then chorus is for you. And I would love to see you next year. Um, we work on developing skills and techniques so that we learn how to sing properly. And then we also go into more technical things like soulfish. We sing like Joe and Gia, like from the sound of music and all that good stuff. And um, we learn the hand or the hand signs for that go along with soulfish syllables and we progress you so that your child is ready for high school at the, the high school level and singing in chorus. Um, we participate in so an ensemble festival. We have concert performance assessment. And we also, I forgot to add this up here, but we also do spring sing um, with the district, which is a great event that uh, our students are gonna be participating in this year. And then we also have our first annual um, winter caroling was this year, and it was so much fun. And it's where students from chorus, orchestra, and band went around the school the last few days before winter break and performed for students, the elementary side as well as the middle school side. And it was a great experience for our students, so they have the opportunity to do that. Um, and then, of course, we have two chorus concerts a year at least, um, one in the fall semester in the spring semester and then the big the big thing is care wins so all three of the five uh, performing arts uh, departments go to care wins and perform 
and then go fun, go have fun, go play, um, and ride rides and all that good stuff. So it's a great time. Um, this is a year-long class, so make sure that you're aware of that as you're registering for your classes. So you make sure everything lines up the way it needs to. So if you like to sing, then come and join me in chorus. It's a lot of fun. So orchestra is the next thing, and um, we play, we start to play from the very beginning. So you learn all the basics. You don't have to have any knowledge of how to play the violin, the viola, the cello, or the bass. When you first start, you can come in, and I'm expecting that I'm just going to have to teach everybody how to even open the case. And so um, it's a great time, and the students learn not only to perform on their own, but to perform as a group. And they really become a family, and it's just a great experience for them, as well as for me. It's very rewarding. And um, so, again, orchestra or strings is the violin, viola, cello, or bass, um, not the guitar or the harp. A student asked me today, I was kind of impressed, they asked me if the lute was offered, and I said, well, okay, well, no, I'm sorry, but I am impressed. Um, then we also do solo and ensemble festival, so they get to perform a solo or in a small group um, for a judge, and they receive an award or a certificate, and of course, concert performance assessment, the winter caroling, two concerts a year at least, and then carolings, of course. And then there's also other opportunities that students um, are able to participate in, auditioning for region orchestra, all state orchestra, um, and then there's violin and viola choirs, cello choirs, bass workshops, and they're just great opportunities for students to learn new techniques and skills on their instruments, play new and fun pieces, but also gain friendships and relationships with people as well as other teachers in the area. So that is orchestra and chorus. Come by my table and see me. I would love to chat with you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kristen Mitel. Um, I do know some, some of the faces, and I'm excited to see some of you all again. I taught here in the elementary side for many, many years, and so I was uh, Miss Wooten then most of those years, and now I am. Um, I've, I've changed to Coach Vitel. So I'm on the side, so I'm excited to see some of you that I. Uh, If you love to move around and socialize with others, I did do that this morning. Um, and this is Coach Stone. Coach Stone and I um, teach together, and we will do sixth, seventh, and eighth grade PE. Um, the biggest difference between um, PE and elementary school and middle school is basically your student, your child is going to move from working on individual skills and work on individual, uh, such as tossing and catching the ball, to working as a team. Um, a lot of things we work on in class is teamwork, working together, social skills, how do I communicate with others to form a team? How do we play a game and get along and work together? And if we have a conflict, how do we work that out? Um, what is, you know, what is fair? And how, you know, team, teamwork, basically. We have, uh, we will work. Um, during the semester, you will participate in both individual sport so we will do a couple of individual sports, but we mostly focus on team sports. Uh, some of the sports that we do, you'll see the one at the very top, and if you ask your, your kids what nitro ball is, um, I think they're probably like, I see a bunch of grins already. So nitro ball is probably one of the most uh, popular sports that we teach here in the middle, on the middle school side. Um, it's a combination of um, tennis and volleyball, and so that's gonna be a fun sport to learn. We go outside and we play flag football. We'll play some disc golf, soccer, basketball. Um, let's see. 
oh, some, we do broomball or floor hockey in here. And we may mix it up and try some other things. And another sport that we do is flicker. And so that's one that your, your um, children have probably heard about from the seventh and eighth graders. And it's um, a combination of ultimate frisbee, football, and basketball. So those really get them going. So Coach Stone is going to talk to you about some the next slide. Good evening. Students will also perform fitness gram testing. Fitness gram testing includes push-ups. It's going to do it again, too. Right. So just, we keep it real in PE. I can't stand the deadness, all right? Um, it's good to have you here. Uh, we, I'm going to be going over a few things with you. Uh, we still do fitness gram. Okay, we told the kids earlier today they will basically do fitness gram all the way through ninth grade. Some of them, of course, love it right now in sixth grade, but by the time they're eighth graders, it changes a lot, okay? Um, with fitness gram, we're working on muscular endurance, muscular strength, uh, cardiovascular endurance, and flexibility. So that involves push-ups, curl-ups, sit and reach, trunk lift, and then the pacer test, okay? Now, with that being said, um, you know, what we do as far as, we usually do things in about two-week units, and during that time, they will be working on these different exercises every day. Okay, every day. Now that leads me into certain questions that get asked many times. Dressing out, okay, because of COVID. That has changed 50,000 times, okay? But right now we do give them the option to dress out. We do not have a uniform right now as we're waiting to see how that progresses. So that might be an option that we go back to next year, but do not hold me to that because we will have to wait and see, okay? Uh, but we do allow them to dress out. Um, these are our locker rooms right over here um, with the little door entryways right there, okay? We also do teach health. If you will notice on your student's schedule, um, it will say PE slash health. That is a big difference for them as well. Um, typically, when they go to related arts and elementary, it's one time per week. But when they come to us, that does involve health units. And of course, again, that involves sexual reproduction, okay? And I will leave it at that. If you have any questions on that, we can talk tonight, okay? Because, again, that is the one topic that they ask in middle school, okay? Now, what that entails, if you do not want your um, young person to be in that class, um, again, that is not a problem. You can opt them out, but you have to do that. You have to sign that form that is in our front office, um, obviously, next year. You can also view the material, okay? You can, as a parent or guardian, view the material. So that you can see that, okay? And again, they will do that sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Um, and the good thing about PE, as you see tonight, we'll be standing right over this area. We get to actually show off our gym. That's where you're at right now. So you can see where we get to work every day, okay? But if you have any questions, we'll talk to you in just a little bit. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, okay, all right. Hello, uh, my name is Rachel White. I uh, teach reading intervention. Uh, reading intervention is essentially a class that addresses just that um, question at the end. Like if your if your student reads an entire text, and at the end of the text they are sitting there thinking, "What in the world did I just read?" It addresses that question. Um, that is a common problem, and some students really do need a little extra help and a little extra intervention, and that's what we do in uh, reading intervention each day. So we work on things like um, reading fluency. We work on reading comprehension. Um, the goal of the class is to increase uh, each student's lexile level, and we actually we had a lot of really good um success with this program. So, um, during the class, we basically go over reading strategies, practice writing skills. It's almost an extra ELA class in the fact that it really just builds on those foundational skills that your student will be learning in a regular ELA. So, we work on uh, TEA writing, we work on paragraph writing, um, and this is actually a class that's a year-long class. It's a little bit different than a regular elective in that your student would test into this class. So you would be notified um, 
if your student gets into this class and then there is a chance during the school year that if they have improved their reading skills enough, then they can actually test out and choose another elective. Hi there, uh, my name is Mrs. Wrigley. And just like reading intervention, um, I teach math intervention. And just like Mrs. White said, um, it is not a class that your students will choose. Um, it's not one that they're going to pick from. Um, math intervention is a class that your student will be placed into um, if, or let's say they just need some extra help with math. Um, what we do is we basically um, just try and build some skills for them to maybe um, fill in some gaps that they might have had um, due to some of the e-learning that we've had. Um, so I do a lot of um, games and um, we work on processes with the students um, to try and fill in some of the gaps that they may have in their learning. Uh, so it is an extension of the regular grade level classroom. So the, I work very closely with the core teachers. Um, they share their lesson plans with me and we work very closely to make sure that whatever they're doing in the classroom, um, the kids then come to me and we work on the same topics, the same content, and um, sometimes we work on the homework with them. Um, they work on the website on Mathia uh, and I give them guidance on that. Uh, I provide additional instruction if needed. Um, to a smaller group and provide support as needed in the area of math. I think, like I said, uh, my goals for the students would be obviously to um, build those skills for them in whichever areas they may um, be lacking. And I would love to see all of the students master their actual current grade level skills. Um, and of course, um, math is all about perseverance. So to increase their perseverance um, when it comes to problem solving and critical thinking. Um, and so this is also a, a placement type of course where um, you would be notified if your student um, was placed in the class um, based on either a teacher recommendation or um, administration recommendation um, or possibly um, how they did on state testing or something like that. Um, but if they did get in the class, um, it would be uh, potentially year-long, um, but of course, um, just as reading intervention, there is always the opportunity, um, if they've shown significant progress, to um, around the semester time be able to exit um, and then choose a different elective um, when the second semester comes. So um, the goal is to always see progress in our students, so that's what I'm hoping for for all my kids. So. Good evening, my name is Alyssa Nichols, and I teach a, a couple classes here. Um, for sixth grade, I teach computer tech, so let me tell you a little bit about that. Um, the first unit is really composed of three units for the semester. The first unit is all about keyboarding, so I don't know how your uh, child is with typing, if they're just a lunch pecker, you know, going around like this, or do they have any kind of uh, working knowledge of keyboard? So what they'll learn is what's called touch typing. And so we do a lot, you gotta do a lot of drills and to keep that from being boring, we do a lot of gamifying in the classroom. So all their drills are online, computer technology. Um, and so it's really amazing to watch their growth from when they first come in to even just like two weeks later, how much they have improved. We just had a little Winter Olympic ceremony and I gave a little gold, bronze, and silver to our uh, sort of our baseline typers right now, and then we'll see in about four weeks how much they've improved. Uh, so that, I think it's just a, a worthwhile class to see students by the end of the semester are typing anywhere from 50 to 100 words per minute, which is pretty incredible. So our second unit, and this is the one that's our biggest unit, um, I tried to design this, this particular unit so that it would be uh, useful for the students throughout this year and their upcoming years. Because basically what they're going to do is learn all the ins and outs of Google applications. So they're going to learn so much about Google Slides, Google Sheets, drawings, 
all of these things that Google provides for us. Um, so some of the examples that we'll do is like for Google Slides, they'll learn how we'll work through all the details and things that they've never even seen, the options that are available. Um, and we'll do a lot of problem-based um, activities. So like for one example is they'll learn how to build an interactive scene. Um, and I teach them and show them how they can apply that to any of their other core classes and use it for projects or whatnot, or even personal use. Um, like for, for Google Sheets, we might calculate NFL uh, stats or maybe MLB stats, since we're in spring now. Um, what else we do? Creating pixel art, uh, even on Google Sheets, so even though that's a mathematical-based application, we try to look at the, the other side of it and how you can do creative things with Google Sheets. Um, creating logos, like superhero logos with Google Draw. So we just do a lot of fun, creative, problem-based um, activities that students really have a lot of choice in, so they, they tend to really love these things. Um, the last part of this unit is sort of a culminating project where they'll take all the things they've learned and they'll build a website. And so that website will include all these different Google applications and they get to choose the topic as long as it's clean and decent. Um, and so they, they just really have a good time of that. So that's something, all of these skills are just, I, I've already had students come back from last year talking about how they use these things in their, in their core classes. And then finally, what I try to do is introduce them to some basic computer coding. Um, after we did our vertical alignment with Fountain Inn, uh, just hearing the things they were talking about kind of made me excited because I thought, yep, they're already getting it in the sixth grade. So they will start with some block coding, and then we'll move up and start learning a little bit about JavaScript. Um, that will tie in with Mr. Paris and some of his robotic stuff eventually in a couple years. And also my eighth grade class, it'll be a new course for next year when I get to eighth grade, uh, will be how to create a mobile application. And so they'll be able to take some of these skills and keep building through our school and eventually on the fountain end or wherever they may be zoned to go. So we'll do a lot of different engaging games and some self-paced tutorials. So if one student needs a little extra work, they can keep working on it. If they're advanced, they can keep moving them, they'll keep moving through it. So that's a little bit about computer tech. Hi, I'm back again. Um, I'm super excited about this class. Uh, before I became a teacher, I actually worked for Channel 7 News and wrote for the 12, 5, and 6 o'clock newscast. And this is going to be something that is starting uh, new this year that we're really excited about. Um, students are going to be able to choose a broadcast journalism class um, where they're actually going to be journalists. They're going to learn. Um, some basic communication skills, but they're also going to be able to write news stories, um, which is just a really cool type of writing um, that's different than you know your normal style in a, in a regular English class. We'll be going through script writing, we'll be on camera, learning journalism basics, also doing some of course reporting of school news, and then uh, really focusing in on the uh, research skills and the communication skills. So I'm super excited about this. This is a new program we're really building um, right now, working on getting all the details together. But uh, this is definitely going to be a neat option next year. Good evening. I'm Mike Paris. I'm one of our gateway to technology teachers along with Ms. Nichols. Uh, I teach design and modeling for the sixth grade, flight and space for the seventh grade, and automation and robotics for the eighth grade. Um, and it's part of the Project Lead the Way curriculum. In design and modeling, uh, the students learn about the design model. They learn how to work as a team to come up with a design. Um, in the upper um, corner of there, that young lady her team designed a foot or ankle and foot orthosis for a um, child that had problems walking. That was her that was her problem that I gave you. Everybody worked together. They did what we call a decision matrix, where they work out and find out which design is the best. They work on sketches. They refine it. Then you had to build a prototype. After they built the prototype, they had to test it. Um, some of them went back to the drawing board literally and modified. Others um, kept on going and they just finished up the presentations last week. Um, also in 
the, from our first union in there, we have um, a, air, a paper air skimmer, which is in the bottom corner. It looks kind of like a paper airplane, but it's a little more detailed. Um, they have to actually draw it out and build it. Um, we test them out in the hallway outside. You can probably see some tape on the floor where we launch them with a rubber band. And they go, they skim above the floor about a quarter of an inch. This year, um, our school record right now is held by a sixth grade young lady. Hers went 70 feet. Just launching it with a rubber band. And you can see in the bottom corner, that's not our class, but you can see how they go through there. Um, the next one, we go to solid modeling. Um, outside, we have a 3D printer. Your child will learn how to use a 3D printer. They will use um, a CAD software we call Tinkercad. And the three drawings we have, those are the drawings that they're, they're going to do. The one in the bottom, they'll do their nameplate. They'll build a scale model of a birdhouse. That's what's printing out in the hallway right now. And they also, they also do a puzzle block. And we do um, kind of weird looking fi figure. That is one where they learn how to attach things, group things, put a hole, notch out, and um, join several shapes in there. Um, the last part of that designing modeling is our design challenge. Again, they work, and this is one where they work in a team. And just like in PE, we teach them teamwork skills. They have to design a therapeutic toy for a student, for a student that, um, with disabilities. Um, the one in the corner of the colored shape puzzle, that's a puzzle block where they had to design that in Tinkercad. And those parts have to fit together. They, that's what the cube is over there, all those parts put together. Um, the one in the other bottom is a maze where they have to take beads and they have to move over the maze to get the beads out. And they also have a skateboard on the front. Um, this class is a lot of fun. Like I say, I'm going to tell the students, my goal is to make science, math, STEM fun. Now back to Ms. Nichols. This is the, the seventh grade class, I don't know. Should, should I go through that? Yeah. So when they get to seventh grade, they'll more, more about that. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Mrs. Dijon. I'm the art teacher over here on the middle level. Um, and I'm going to go to sixth grade. We'll just discuss this one. So um, art is obviously a visual language, but I really like to get my students to start thinking about art and also kind of articulating their ideas. So one of the first things we do um, in sixth grade is we actually discuss paintings. And I tell them, you don't have to know anything about this. You just need to do some critical thinking and discuss with one another what you think of the artwork. So we do a lot of that in class. We also um, do a lot of realism. So, uh, as mentioned by some of the related arts teachers before, in fifth grade, they only go to related arts once a week, but with us, we see them every day. So, we make a point to really, um, in my class, start observing more of our surroundings and put that into our artwork. So, we absolutely use our imagination, but it's really important that we start seeing things. So, one of our first units is going to be a self-portrait, and we talk about proportions, and some of those things even relate to math. Um, we talk about facial proportions. One of our current units right now is uh, perspective. And perspective is very important if you have any interest maybe in either architecture or gaming, um, design, interior, exterior. And so we learn about that. And again, we just also have a lot of creativity in the classroom. We're going to do some painting. We do a lot of drawing. Um, we also do some mixed media work, some paper collage, and so forth. And then that will lead into um, obviously seventh grade and then eighth grade. And then we'll eventually, and I'll just add this in, if your uh, student has any interest by the time they get to um, rising eighth graders, and taking honors art class, then that's something that they'll want to have in sixth and seventh grade as well. Thank you. Hola, bienvenidos a los estudiantes, también a las familias. 
I am Brittany Williams, and I am the Spanish teacher here at Rudolph Gordon. Um, I teach Spanish to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. So here at Rudolph Gordon, if you take Spanish in 6th grade or in 7th grade, it is a half year course. You take one semester, you come see me every day, and it's what's known as beginner Spanish. So this is an entry level course, something to really just, you know, get your toes wet. Um, I don't even know how to work this. Oh, there it goes. Okay, sorry. I, uh, I'm a Spanish teacher, that's, that's the limit of my knowledge. All right, so when you're in sixth and seventh grade and you come to see me, this, like I said, is a foundational class. Um, it's really a good chance for your students to get some of those basic skills that they need in order to continue with the language down the road. We have a lot of fun. I love to really annoy my students with obnoxious songs that stuck in their head. They hate me for it, but then they love me for it because then they remember it. Um, but we have a really good time. You can see there I kind of broke down the different units. I'm not gonna read it all to you because I know that's kind of boring, but just to give you a glimpse of some of the things we talk about, um, right out the gate, after we talk about why we learn language, as just one week, um, we start to talk about things just like the alphabet. What sounds do all the different letters make? Because that's a really good way to break down how we pronounce Spanish, because a lot of times for many English speakers, learning Spanish, that's a difficult concept. Um, and then we just do things like a lot of personal information, you know, como te llamas, what's your name, me llamo, my name is, um, things like age, birthdays, all that fun stuff. So this is the same course, essentially sixth and seventh grade. Seventh grade, we kind of oof it up a little bit more as the kids start to get older. By the end, there are a few things that differ, um, but it's still half a year in seventh grade. But all of this is a really good way to start to prepare your students for eighth grade, um, and just to keep in mind when you are and when your students get to eighth grade, they do have the opportunity to take Spanish one for high school, and that would be a high school credit. That is a full year course, so they're with me from start to finish of the school year, but it is a way for them to get one foreign language credit under their belt for high school. The one in sixth and seventh grade is just beginner Spanish, so it does not offer a high school credit, but like I said, it's great for foundation. So I always tell my students, you can take it and you're interested, take it. Because in order to build a house, which is what, is what we're doing when we uh, learn a language, you need a strong foundation. So if your students are interested in coming to see me in Spanish and learning a little bit, I'd love to see them. Um, one question I get a lot is if you already speak Spanish in the home or with family, if your students are familiar with the language, is it beneficial for them? And I say yes, because oftentimes students who are speaking at home aren't necessarily reading and writing because in the school system, they're reading and writing English. And there's some big differences. So for them to come and see me, they get a lot of that as well. And it's really good for them. And that's it. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye. Hey everyone, my name is Kelsey Gunter. I'm the band teacher here and me tell you a little bit about band. First of all, you get to learn a brand new instrument, unless of course you've already learned a band instrument and you're more than welcome to come too. But I expect that most students have no experience. You can only start band in the sixth grade. So that's a big important takeaway of if you're interested at all in band, or if your child is interested at all in band, start this year, give it a shot and see how they like it. Then, um, no experience necessary. Then we can perform in concerts throughout the year. We do two main two main ones in the sixth grade, um, plus a concert at Carowinds, and we get to actually perform on stage for judges there. And then we get to go in the parks and ride roller coasters and all that fun stuff. Um, it is a year long class, and you don't have to worry about toting the instruments around the school because there is a locker provided. You make lifelong friends, of course. We're like a family in the band room. And there's future scholarship opportunities. And as well as some of the other classes, if you stay in band, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, you will be eligible for high school credit as long as you pass the class and you meet all the expectations. Kind of cut off a little bit, but as you can see, there's a lot of instruments to choose from. Um, flute, oboe, bassoon, clarinet, bass clarinet, alto sax, tenor sax, berry sax, trumpet, French horn, euphonium, tuba, snare drum, trump, xylophone, cymbal, space drum, timpani. I teach all of those, and you can find something that you love. You can find an instrument that fits you, I promise. And last but not least, my students put together a little video. It's short, I promise, and it just kind of 
gives their reasonings for joining Van. I think you'll enjoy it. Friends, and they can come here, even like, so like, and it's real fun too. 
Then not just you get out of the house. You get that answer. It's good. You got it right there? Ooh. Oh, they hit the spot. Thank you. If you have questions, I'll be up. Okay, now the fun part. That put a smile on my face because I remember my boys going through and bringing that horn trumpet thing home. And... <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. Does it mean that if you do try band, does it mean you have to stay in band? But it's also really nice to learn something new, right? And to have an experience. Um, I'm going to click on, hopefully your child came home today with a pink registration form. Okay, let me pop it up here for you just to explain. This is what's so exciting about middle school is that you sixth graders have a voice in choosing your classes from here on out as far as not core classes, but your electives. So that's what's fun. This sheet, when it comes home, please send it back ASAP because we're on a time constraint, okay? We're on a timeline. You have the choice of option one, you choose three semester long courses, and if you can see that first box right here, there's your elective courses, semester long. That's art, broadcast journalism, GTT design and modeling, computer tech, and Spanish, okay? Then you either choose, your option one is you choose three of those. Your option two is if you wanna take a year long class, you choose one year-long class, which is down at the bottom, chorus, band, strings, or orchestra, and one semester. So if I want to take band, I'm going to take it all year. Half a semester, I'm going to take art, and that other half a semester is going to be PE. Don't forget you got PE in there that everybody takes. Does that make sense? Clear as mud, right? If you notice, there's no option three. I get kids to ask me all the time, but I want to take band, and I want to take broadcast, and I want to take computer. Well, if you're going to take band, you're going to have to pick between the other two. So just option one and two. Now, if you notice the box alternate one and two, we'd like to know what your alternates are. There are some popular classes up here, as you can see, listening. So if we can't get everybody in those classes, we'd like to know your next best option. Okay? Does that make sense? What's going to happen is Ms. Cooley and I, 7th and 8th grade council, we're going to go in and sit with the kids, and we're going to need this sheet back. If this sheet does not come back, that means we're going to do our best to pick those classes for your kid. And we would rather for you and the student to pick those classes. We'll do, we'll do our best job. We'll ask all kinds of the best questions we can ask, and hope we get that. At the very end, after the process, we will run copies of all the core classes, all the electives, you'll get to see it and you'll get to sign it to approve it. Is that fair? And if you have any changes or any questions, then we'll just go day by day with that. Does anybody have any questions as far as the registration part? Core classes, remember, are done by your teacher. And then this is the fun part, the elective. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to put this whole presentation on top on the um, on the website so you can print it off. Are you a virtual student? Is that what you're saying? Virtual council is taking care of virtual registration. Your council should take care of your registration. Okay. 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 Okay.
Good question. That's why you're only choosing one semester class there because your PE is the other semester. Yes, ma'am. Um, in regards to computer tech, that end of the school project that Google provides, is that going to be done in school or do they have to do that at home? Most everything is done in the classroom. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, so we really, really, really appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Hopefully we were able to answer some, a lot of questions for you. We currently now have our 7th and 8th, rising 7th and 8th graders pushing at the door trying to get in. So what we're going to ask you to do is to exit out this door. you got about 10 minutes to spend with the related arts teachers. And then let us know if you have any questions. Thank you for coming. Thank you.